Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you to our free webinar, Disconnect to Reconnect, Relationship Reboot, jointly organized by NAFIU Wellness and NAFIU Academy. Tonight, we have the privilege of having two esteemed guest speakers, Anna Sulas Sulaska and Zahira Masawood, to share their wisdom and insight on this topic. Anna is a business and wellness coach with NAFIU Wellness also a yoga practitioner. She delivers programs in corporate culture, human values, as well as individual and organization wellness. Zahira is the principal counselor with Nafil Counseling. She works with adults, adolescents, couples, and families on a broad range of mental health conditions such as stress, anxiety, depression, and bipolar disorder. And without further ado, Anna and Zahira, please. Thank you so much, Ken. Thank Hello. You, Ken. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. So I am Anna, and I represent Nafield Wellness, and together with me here is my dear colleague, Sahira, from Nafield Counseling. And today we are going to share a webinar titled Disconnect to Reconnect Relationship Reboot. This is a very fascinating topic, <laughs> and I hope you will all enjoy it. Thank so. you, Anna, for that opening. Um, okay, so this entire webinar is going to be half an hour. Uh, to just be mindful, uh, you can leave your questions and answers, I mean, questions um, on the chat box. We won't be looking at the questions right now because we'll be too busy, you know, exp trying to explain to you what the webinar is all about. But towards the end of it, uh, we'll have a 15-minute uh, short question and answer segment whereby we'll answer those questions at that point. Okay, so let's begin, Anna. Yes, before we move on to actually open our topic, I would kindly like to uh, point out the fact that uh, ideally this webinar is only for people who are at least 18 years old. Mm -hmm. So whoever potentially right now listening to us is not, I would ask you to, to leave this webinar. Thank you so much. And let's move on to our first part. Okay, so here is the beautiful quote that um, Sahira prepared for us when mm -hmm. we are talking and we tried to figure out how to actually open this discussion. And uh, I love this one. I spent quite a while to elaborate mm -hmm. on it. Maybe you would like to share your thoughts. Why did you select this one to start? Okay, um, as what's saying here essentially is we come to love um, not by finding a perfect person, but by learning to see an imperfect person perfectly. This uh, quote is actually from uh, an author called Sam Keen. Um, but I felt that this quote was really relatable for this webinar because uh, to begin with, there is no such thing as a perfect partner. We are all imperfect. I mean, creatures, right? Um, we all come with our own flaws, uh, with our own uh, fears, vulnerability, uh, unresolved uh, childhood issues uh, that we carry on to our adulthood. And, um, you know, how we perceive and how we view the world is totally different from our, how our partners view the world, or that is our, even our own friends. So uh, what's unique about love is that uh, when when you're totally in love with someone, you don't have a foresight of what it's going to be like in a relationship, right? Uh, you don't have a foresight of uh, their imperfections because everything seems to be in that rose in that glasses and everything seems to be very perfect at that point of time. But over time, that relationship itself, you start looking at the small little details and you start saying that, hey, wait a minute, this, this, this is not sitting right with me, right? So that's the imperfect, uh, you know, the imperfect partner that you tend to look at and say that, hey, I don't want this in my relationship, I want something else. Um, I so, take this package, but I don't want to take that yes, package. Yes, exactly, you know. Um, <laughs> Without this, so, <laughs> 
Yeah, so uh, why is that? So that's that's the objective of this webinar is to, to help you coexist in that partnership itself as there's two people with two different worldview of things mm -hmm. and you can be in a space whereby there's no judgment, there's no, um, you know, um, restrictions as what you should be confining yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so you can coexist in a space whereby there's a lot of empathy, there's a lot of understanding, and there's a lot of pure love. So mm -hmm. I, I feel this quote is really, it's, it's a real nice fit to this webinar that's why i chose it mm -hmm. okay so um yeah uh i hope you guys will enjoy this webinar as much as how we did. enjoy <laughs> you know, creating it and preparing it and let so, me share my five cents about this particular okay. quote because i i was thinking of it when you shared this with me in the morning and i would just like to tell you one thing about love in general maybe this webinar is more about sexuality and the intimacy mm -hmm. uh, between uh, partners but in terms of love purely um, I feel that love is just what we are in the very essence mm -hmm. it's just there and you don't you don't need to look for it you don't need to uh, seek it in your partner even it's just there this is what we are all if we remove all the social conditioning, all the impressions that we have in our mind. Then another thing is that how this love is being expressed on the personality level. So when we add our own life story as people, as individuals, and we combine it with our own narratives mm -hmm. and understanding of love, then that is when the things get complicated because that's right yeah it's like our mind is like a prison through which this pure essence of love is being filtered and then it can create a lot of flavors a lot of shades and colors and sometimes it's very beautiful mm -hmm. so sometimes it um lifts us and makes us very free and um, expands us and makes us very defined in other times it's very limiting because we have certain distorted expressions and interpretations mm -hmm. of, of love based on our own life experiences that's the reason why during this webinar we want to have a look at all these limiting patterns behaviors that might be potentially disabling us yeah. from actual pure expression of yeah. love between us and our loved ones not even necessarily on the partners but in general people around us mm -hmm. that we care about yeah so it's essentially like peeling off the layers of yes. of you know uh of things that we might it might not work in our relationship anymore where there's a lot more empathy and understanding and forgiveness exactly yeah Let's okay. move on. With Let's this. start off the webinar right now. Okay. So uh, the contents of this uh, whole webinar, the relationship reboot itself, we'll be discussing and touch upon uh, challenges that couples uh, face in long-term relationship, the common roadblocks uh, in every committed relationship. We will also discuss uh, the benefit of mindfulness and how it helps to strengthen your relationship. Uh, we will elaborate more on uh, this part, which is the tantric practice for a deeper bond in your partnership itself uh, to connect you and your partner on a deeper level. Right. And yes. lastly, of course, uh, this whole webinar is a, uh, there will be an extension to it whereby there is a uh, Nafil Secret and Centrality retreat that we're planning for yes. our couples or individuals who would like to work on themselves and how to go, you know, peel that layers off. <laughs> right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, let's move on to the first topic, which is the common roadblocks in relationship. Anna, I think um, yes. we've spoke about our quite a, 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 it's totally our favorite topic. And the first <laughs> one is stress because, you know, with stress, you know, it creates a lot of disharmony in, in relationships, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, we know this feeling, but we are most often not realizing how much we are flooded with cortisol on a daily basis uh, yeah. in our work. Mm -hmm. So when we are so tense, even unconsciously, and we carry this heightened stress level, and we bring this to our bedroom in the evening, then believe me, it's not enticing atmosphere to actually <laughs> open up to your partner and to, to welcome them, being fully present and open. How the cortisol works in our system, I believe that everyone knows that it creates this fight or flight mode. So yes, it makes right. the whole body very ready, yes. very stiff. Every single muscle is stiff. We don't even realize how much, including the genital area. So when we try to meet our partner and actually get the full satisfaction, and I think it's even more valid for women mm -hmm. because women are the ones who need to open up. Uh, it makes it very difficult when we bring all the stress, all this hormonal makeup to the bedroom in the evening. Oh, so yes, of course. Stress is definitely a you mood. You won't have here. any mood for any. It's, it's the, the ultimate joy killer in every relationship, right? So the body goes through this whole process of the fight, fight or flight mode, as we were talking about. Uh, it's a it's an acute stress response. And and of course, when, when you are in a stressful, uh, like what you say, you know, your your muscles tends to uh, tense up. And you know, um, that translates into a really negative behavior on its own. And with this negative behavior, I mean, bring it into the bedroom, whether it's your husband or the wife or, you know, just your partner. Uh, I feel, you know, when, when your partner come into face with you that way, they'll be like, okay the wall was just going to start piling up slowly. Yes. Yes, I wouldn't even want to touch you or just to give you a kiss because I can yes. sense this negative energy coming from you. So We are not even in the mood then. Yes, so then exactly. Can... <laughs> <laughs> I think that goes for everyone who's in a very stressful state, especially in partnerships, right? Mm -hmm. uh, stress does add on to that relationship itself. It dampens your whole entire uh, state of being yes. yeah where you can't be truly present for them but sometimes also we should mention it doesn't need to be any kind of like extreme stress feeling sometimes we are even talking only about uh, mental stress yeah when the stress is being sensed only in the mind because we are being overflown with a lot of information we are being constantly stimulated by some external factors yeah this is when the mind is so active that we just can't be even present anymore in what we are doing yeah because very often as we spoke today people say that, okay, I'm going right now to switch on Netflix or maybe watch a movie or see the news. This is my form of relaxation yeah. after tiring working day. This is not actually relaxation for the mind is still being flooded with data, with yeah. information that it needs it's to process. It's fully occupied. So, yes. so that's why, you know, to the next point, which is a poor communication and feeling to be present for your partner, uh, when you're overly, you know, uh, stimulated mentally. Um, mentally. <laughs> yes. In a bad way. In a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where you can't be fully present in, in that partnership itself because there's a million windows that's open up there, right? Can you remind me what you told me in the morning about the people in Singapore? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was brilliant. <laughs> People in Singapore, we it's a rat race, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, with this rat race culture, we tend to like uh, overlook things, uh, what's really important at that point of time, mm -hmm. especially being with your partner. See, for example, you're in the bedroom and trying to, I think Anna, you did mention this as well. <laughs> uh, you know, one, one of the couples that we've encountered who have, uh, you know, uh, talked about this is that, well, making love he's not truly really present there and he was on his phone and looking yes. at his emails so yeah that's where you know you you tend to not be 
present <laughs> in that moment to enjoy that moment intimately with your partner. Uh, yeah, so a, a lot of that is related to, you know, coming back to stress. Stress relates to poor communication and failing to be present for your partner. Yes. Okay, so the Let next... Me add my five cents here. Yes, oh, that's so a good communication and inability to be actually present. Very often it looks like this. You cannot be even present on your own by yourself because you need to be, it's like addiction. You need to be always stimulated with a lot of data. Yeah, on your phone or when your laptop. There is no data. You feel bored and the mind goes, okay, what to do now? I, I don't know. The mind goes very restless and then a lot of thoughts are being generated. So it's actually an art to be able to let go and stop. And it's associated with stopping your inner chatter, your mental chatter. And only then you can start being present, learning how to be present with your partner. Yeah. And we very often we are lacking this basic ability because of the modern times and uh, the fast pace of life, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Let's so... move then to another <laughs> interesting point, which is uh, how we call it, uh, <laughs> it's a sexy name, like <laughs> lack, lack of sexual intelligence. It might be a little bit misleading, the title, but uh, let's explain what we mean by that. We are basically referring to uh, lack of proper education about our bodies, lack of understanding of our bodies, what gives us pleasure, mm -hmm. and at the same time, how to give pleasure, how to both give and receive. Um, because we live in society, sometimes I call it, it's a medieval ages of sexual literacy. <laughs> no one teaches us properly, in a healthy, in a balanced way, yeah. to understand our bodies and our own sexuality. Yeah. And very often we receive very minimal information, maybe from our teachers or our parents, yeah. but then the rest we are more like experimenting on our own. Yeah. And the culture, and I would say both in the East and in the West, it's not actually inducive for us to understand our own sexuality in a healthy yeah. way. I think I'll add on to that. Uh, the lack of sexual intelligence in the Asian context itself, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are, most of us are raised in a very conservative household. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, our parents don't really talk to us about the birds and the bees, right? You know, in, in the Western culture, I do know that, you know, parents tend to talk to their children about it. Uh, but for us, it's a totally different setup altogether. Uh, we tend to be quite restricted in that sense. Uh, so we only know about sex until we have we come to that age where we have our own sexual encounters. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where we actually learn on uh, what to do or what brings us pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not freely discussed between partners because it's still uh, considered a, a topic a of taboo. Yes. You know, um, so it's it's really hard for I mean, being an Asian. It's it's hard mm -hmm. to, to tell your partner this is what I want to make myself mm -hmm. feel good, right? Yes. Uh, it, it sounds more like a you know a very dominating kind of uh, role. Uh, so it. You know that there's a disconnect right there you know completely and um i think very often women won't tell because they don't know themselves they just don't know what gives them pleasure yes. on the other hand men they think they are great yeah <laughs> very often they think they are great and they don't realize that they just and purely they my like some men. <laughs> i'm sorry i don't mean to be offensive but uh, it's very often they just they are just not aware that they lack basic skills, how to make a woman happy and satisfied. Mm -hmm. And our bodies are much more complicated in this sense. It yeah. takes a little bit more to make us aroused, for example. Yeah. So it's quite a challenge. I don't, uh, I, I wouldn't like to be a man in this <laughs> matter to learn all these complica complications of being a woman. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's uh, that's, now... That's where it's in relation to the next uh, point, which is the shame and guilt. I exactly. think, I think uh, when there's lack of sexual interaction uh, between partners in a long-term relationship, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, especially women, right? Women who become mothers, you know, we, we tend to identify ourselves with this role that we're a mother and we have to conduct ourselves in a different way because we are presenting ourselves as that nurturing type yes. of role and we have uh, so many other things that's on our plate being a mother, <laughs> right? Um, so when our partners look at us in that motherly role, they tend to dissect that or, or disconnect that, that, hey, this woman is actually, you know, has been my lover at one point of time, whereby I'm able to freely express myself to her. But, you know, once that role has changed, you know, that, that, that is that disconnection. Mm -hmm. um, I feel uh, in a partnership, men tend to uh, be a bit more reserved in how they want to connect with their partners yes. and um, I feel there's a lot of shame and guilt that comes along with that too because uh, you know that's where when it comes to infidelity I feel like most men who who goes down that path in, in my sessions with my clients, I notice that men are seeking for more freedom of expression, right? Mm -hmm. uh, freedom of expression, meaning that they can be their authentic selves. They can express or do things that they want to do to make themselves feel good. Yes. Yeah. And it's associated with this belief that you can either have amazing lover or amazing wife and yeah. mother for your children. And usually somehow uh, there are two different roles. Why can't they be combined together? It's only because of our limitations and belief systems. Yeah. Also about shame and guilt. Um, I think that one of the most basic uh, forms of shame would be also the body shame yes and course. if i ask majority of people are you ashamed of your body i think they would reply most likely no not at all i'm fine with my body but i think it's more subconscious we all carry it to center center extent maybe some people more other people less but all of us uh, faced it at some point in our lives when we felt that um, we are not actually perfectly fine with the body mm -hmm. and we don't actually be can be very comfortable when we are exposed yeah. and naked in front of our partner yeah. which is largely contributing to our level of satisfaction and connection with the partner in the bedroom yeah that's so right. it is very important to actually accept yourself yeah. just as you are Exactly. Um, I think uh, to, to expand on that, uh, when it comes to like what I mentioned earlier on, uh, for mothers, you know, their body has totally changed. And yeah, they do go through this uh, moment where they, they are ashamed of how they look like uh, in front of their partners because their partners still look the same, right? Yes. And their body has completely changed. So yeah, uh, I think... But a lot of it is in the mind. Exactly. <laughs> for, bo for both sexes, exactly. actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move on to the next shall slide. Shall we? Yes. Perfect. There we go. Okay, so uh, what mindfulness and uh, what is mindfulness and how it can help you in your relationship? Um, okay, so these are the three points I felt that's really important is being present for your partner. That's how mindfulness can help you uh, strengthen your relationship. Uh, so no matter how far you've come in your intimate relationship itself, cultivating love, intimacy, uh, and a union is an ongoing process, right? The union and the partnership is, is an ongoing process. So as mindfulness is the ever unfolding uh it's an ever unfolding um compassionate non-judgmental uh awareness of each and every moment that you have with your partner whereby there's like what i mentioned earlier on there's a lot of empathy there's a lot of understanding uh towards your partner and <clears throat> You know, uh, with these moments, you know, it goes hand in your hand when you can actually practice mindfulness so you can be in the present moment and be available for your partner. Um, so as your relationship evolves, uh, 
so does you know the practice of mindfulness itself you know you can go on different levels to meet your partner and be and coexist in that space mm -hmm. where uh, there's a lot more understanding right yes. so that's what we're trying to achieve here you know it's not only just to practice mindfulness for the relationship itself but it's also for your own personal growth and um, you know for you and your partner right and uh, these can then help you reignite the uh, your passion and by being a better lover for them yes. uh, because there's a lot more understanding in that relationship you just yeah. gave me one thought that we also like we covered before when we are talking together about yeah. this that it always starts with you and i think that a lot of people kind of find trying to bypass this important <laughs> aspect that they want to focus on fixing the partner oh yes of <laughs> course it's always you know it's always not looking at yourself first and how you can work within yourself doing a lot more inner work to to actually work on the relationship so when you do a lot of inner work you tend to pick up the things that is not serving the relationship at this point so what can you do about it so that's what mindfulness does you know it actually uh, show you how you can create a more meaningful and uh, more understanding relationship mm -hmm. right? yeah perfect mindfulness together with tantra which go hand in hand i would yeah. say and they are not that different. So this is again by Zahira. Zahira has this uh, <laughs> magical ability to uh, come up with beautiful quotations that fit perfectly in our webinar. Let me read it aloud first. Tantra teaches you to handle your sexual energy in a new way, consciously, with a heart that's involved, attentive to everything that's happening. It strengthens every aspect of your love life. Okay, so... Um, I'm actually going to share something that, I don't know, maybe to some people it might sound a little bit controversial, mm -hmm. but I'm being honest right now. <laughs> Sexual energy, that's the fact. It's one of the most potent energies that we have in our body, if you are talking about our energy system, right? Mm -hmm. And it has the ability to create new life. It's the most powerful energy that, that we have naturally in our system. Mm -hmm. And there is a reason why uh, some of the mystics and uh, people who mastered meditation, when they are referring to uh, the state of like samadhi, how they call it, uh, it has also other names, but this is this kind of like expanded state of consciousness mm -hmm. when you are actually connected to your core essence, they describe this feeling as a beautiful orgasmic state of the whole body, of your whole system. And they really refer to orgasm and why. Um, I would explain it like this. To me, um, sexual energy and the moment we actually experience climax, is like a small window, like a peak into our own bliss that mm -hmm. we actually carry all of us, but we maybe don't have the ability if we don't um, pay attention to this or we don't uh, make our minds trained to be more open to this flow. Usually we are not that connected with it. We don't realize it. We don't know how to utilize it. So, but orgasm is something that everyone loves and enjoys for some reason. Why? Because it's like a glimpse into samadhi state, into the core of our being. Mm -hmm. That's why we can use tantric practices uh, and we can use the sexual energy that we are building up in our system to our advantage in a conscious way so that it can bring us very deep so that we are better connected within mm -hmm. and also together with the partner. And at this point, it's not anymore merely sex. It's more like a union, a union with yourself and a union with your partner, which makes it very beautiful. It can be amazingly healing experience and it can be very transformative for, for both partners. Mm -hmm. So I feel that it's a very beautiful tool 
as long as we approach it with proper understanding, with awareness, and we have proper intention how we want to use it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, what I understand by Tantra is that uh, it's a meditative state uh, whereby you, you get connected with the energy of your partner and it comes into an alignment, right? Yes. So when there's an alignment in that energy itself, it creates that space where it's very intimate and beautiful to experience that together. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This is bringing awareness to sex, to put it in a very short words. Mm -hmm. When you bring this, you can connect with your partner on so many more levels. Mm -hmm. Very often, we are maybe connected on the body level. It's very easy to open up your body for someone, but you can stay closed on your more subtle levels. And um, it's like only stimulating one string of the guitar. While we actually involve all of our system and we learn to use our energies to connect on all the levels with the partner, it's like a beautiful symphony. It's altogether a completely different kind of experience and feeling. That's why I said this is more like a union rather than just having sex. In yeah, the yeah, it sounds amazing. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah we'd love to experience that. <laughs> Okay, so I think you're going to show them a little bit about how you can actually do this tantric practice and yes. in your bedroom, right? Yes. With your partner. Let's uh, maybe... I'll I can be your like, model. Thank you so much for being yeah. my model. <laughs> as maybe <laughs> You can be my male or female partner. It doesn't matter. But I encourage right now everyone to just listen. Obviously, it's pointless for you to actually follow through. If you feel like you can close your eyes and just meditate right now and listen to my instructions. Otherwise, you can just stay present and observe us doing this uh, exercise. We are just going to introduce you to maybe the first four or five minutes uh, of facilitating this meditation to mm -hmm. the partner. But you can do it on your own uh, with your loved ones. It can take... 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you can do it for as long as you like. And I feel it's a very beautiful practice when you really want to go back home to your partner, let go and be finally fully present with them mm -hmm. and really switch off the mental chatter. Mm -hmm. Shall we start? Yes. <laughs> So it's best if you sit very comfortably mm -hmm. opposite each other. You can be sitting down, having your back supported. Maybe let's make it a little bit more quiet so that everyone can hear us properly. Would you take off your glasses for a while? Yes. <laughs> I would love to see your eyes more, okay. more properly. So we are not closing our eyes right now mm -hmm. and we can start with only focusing on our breath. So we can take a deep inhale together and exhale. And for one short while, before we start looking into our partner's eyes, we can actually close our eyes and go within. So let's all do it. We can close our eyes and take a deep breath in. Breathe out. And pay attention to every muscle in your body right now. If you happen to feel any stiffness anywhere, pay attention to your thought processes or emotions. Everything that's arising, just let it be. It doesn't bother you at all. And feel the energy of your partner sitting in front of you. Just tune into it and feel it, be with it, without any judgments. 
just feel calm or maybe a little bit anxious or stressed. Just let it be as it is right now. You can take a deep breath in. Look into your partner's eyes. And whatever thoughts or emotions are appearing right now, just let them be. Look completely innocently like a child. Even if you had some argument before, even if your mind right now creates some narratives about him or her, just let them go, let them be, they don't bother you. And if you wish, you may actually hold each other's hands like this. This is one way to feel each other's energies better. Mm -hmm. Or the other solution is you can gently place your hand on your partner's heart. And relax in this process. Don't hold back anything. Even if you feel a little bit awkward with this, sometimes people tend to laugh or feel very stiff or um, feel very awkward in this whole situation. Just let it be and be very genuine, stay with this process, no matter what kind of feelings or emotions are arising. And keep looking. And you may find a silent way for gratitude and to be thankful for your partner just for being here. Just as he or she is right now with you. Fully acknowledging her or him. And again, it can take a little bit more time keeping an eye contact without saying any single word. This is actually a very beautiful meditation because when you are present like this, when you look into someone's eyes, the mind naturally goes into silent mode because it, for me, it feels so intimate to be looking into your partner's mm -hmm. eyes that it feels sometimes even more intimate than actual lovemaking. It feels like looking into your soul when you are not hiding anything. And this is a beautiful beginning and introduction into opening up and even into making love together on a way deeper level. And all it takes is at least this few minutes of being present together, really present, without escaping into mental narrations and being with your partner. Mm -hmm. While at the end, you can just hug one another. And just be grateful that this person is right now next to you and supporting you in so many levels. So this is how it looks like. And I really encourage you to take this practice seriously. Maybe it uh, looks as something too simple sometimes for, mm -hmm. for people and uh, some of us may think okay it's too simple how can it work I'm just staring into your eyes but that's the thing we need to bypass the mind sometimes to go deeper irregardless of all the chatter all the narrations and the way to do it is to focus really focus on your presence yeah. on our presence as partners and the best point of focus is our eyes always 
That's because beautiful. they can really open us up, both of us. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think uh, that is the true essence of just being present. Yeah, because it's just away from everything, away from all the noise, just being focused in that moment, in that private, intimate moment. Um, yeah, I would encourage all of you to try this out. Um, Ella, would you be giving uh, our participants uh, a step-by-step -step on how they can actually do this? Yes, we are definitely going to elaborate on that during our full version of uh, Secret of Sensuality Retreat. So we are going to teach you a lot of beautiful techniques. Right now, unfortunately, we have very limited time. Yeah. But trust me, even if you want to and try to incorporate this kind of practice, it can give you beautiful results right away without waiting. Yeah. So I encourage we, everyone to try it out. In the meantime, let's move to another side, another chapter right now. Okay, so I think uh, what essentially we, we are discussing here is that uh, the secret of the sensuality um, retreat and the couples workshop that we will be holding uh, sometime in the next couple of months. Yes. Uh, this webinar would be a three-part series webinar. This will be our first one and there'll be a continuation, yes. which is on the 23rd of June. So um, yeah, please join us again. Um, so uh, this workshop itself, what we'll be covering would be uh, these points, which is uh, discovering full pleasure of one sensuality, uh, understanding intimacy as a way of personal growth, dropping limiting beliefs and behaviors related to our sexuality, forming deeper bond with your partner, enabling healthy self-expression and contentment in the relationship, and of course, lastly, is understanding yourself better on a deeper level. So that's where the inner work will be uh, uncovered in the workshop itself. Uh, so yes, I encourage all of you to join us in our next webinar. Okay, so uh, I think right now we will open the floor to the uh, question and Definitely. I just put it like this about the pleasure and sensuality yeah. part. If you think you know pleasure, you don't know anything yet. <laughs> join <laughs> us to really explore. Uh, to understand how to connect in such ways that you can have amazingly fulfilling love life that I'm sure you have not discovered yet and I mean it. Awesome. <laughs> At this point we can move, as Sahira mentioned, I'm sorry for the distraction, to the <laughs> questions and answers part. In the meantime, let me... Uh, yes switch to in another way let's open the questions answers box okay if there happen to be no questions at this point i understand you may feel shy <laughs> asking us about anything related to particularly this topic we are together with zahira more than happy to connect with each and every one of you uh, answer any question that you may have uh, privately and also maybe explain you a little bit more uh, on the upcoming retreat that we are going to both host together. Yeah, okay. Uh... Uh, okay. Hi, Anna. I think there's actually a, a question in the chat. Uh, yes. Is there a book or a website to read more? Yes, correct. Yes, there is definitely a, a website to read more on the topic and we can share the website uh, with everyone at the end of this webinar. Um, in the meantime, we are also more than happy, as I mentioned, to share with you more information privately. You can very easily reach out to both of us, either on our WhatsApp or email address. Yes, uh, you can either reach out to Anna or myself, Zahira, uh, or any questions you have uh, pertaining to 
whether it's the mindfulness uh, workshop or the uh, Secrets of Sensuality workshop, uh, both of us will be more than happy to give you the uh, full context of what we're going to do in this workshop. Okay, so... And um, by the way, we are also running private one-on-one -on -one sessions. During the sessions, we can also give you a glimpse of what Secret of Sensuality workshop is all about. And you don't need to come together with your partner. It's not necessary. If you are single right now and you just like to simply understand yourself better as a lover, just for your own knowledge and growth, you are also most welcome. Yes. So we are not discriminated here. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't need Everyone to be. Everyone is welcome. Yes. yes. Yeah. No more. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Since we have no question, I think we covered it all. Thank you. Uh, we enjoyed uh, connecting with you this evening. Yeah. And we are looking forward to uh, connect with you again during the second part of the series. So see you on the 23rd of June for our next series of the webinar. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening, everyone.